Cloud9's young Australian top laner Fudge has been one of the best stories of the LCS this year. And if you look at the pattern his career has followed so far, it's easy to predict that there are even greater things ahead. A key feature of Fudge's career so far has been his ability to adapt to new levels of competition and grow into new challenges over time. From his start in the Oceanic Academy scene to the quarterfinals of the World Championships, Fudge's story is one of constant, accelerated progression. It started in June 2019 when Fudge was promoted from Mammoth's Oceanic Academy team into the OPL. Barely 17 at the time, Fudge got to play with an Oceanic Super Team, alongside Triple, Babip, Destiny, and King, and he grew into that team quickly. He was a difference maker during Mammoth's playoffs run, posting a 5.5 KDA, plus 637 GXD10, and team leading 527 damage per minute, en route to the OPL title. From there, Fudge flew off to his first world championship. There he helped Mammoth take two games off the Unicorns of Love in the round robin before falling in a tiebreaker and failing to advance to knockouts. The international competition was stiffer than anything he had faced to that point, and his laning stats in particular showed it plummeting from above plus 600 at home to minus 575 in play-ins. Even so, the combination of Mammoth's world's performance and their play in the OPL was enough for Fudge and King to catch the attention of one of the other world's attending teams, Cloud9, who signed them both to their academy squad later that year. Compared to world's play-ins, academy was a lesser challenge, and Fudge proved it by teaming up with King, Inori, Palafox, and Diamond to take first in both the regular season and playoffs in spring. Visa issues kept King out of the lineup for summer, so Tomo subbed in, and the change didn't hold them back. Fudge took on an even larger role in the team, and C9A repeated their achievement, winning the regular season and playoffs again in summer. Fudge's play that summer led me to write, Fudge will be the most sought-after academy player in the upcoming offseason. He could slot into an LCS roster pretty seamlessly. A few weeks later, Riot announced that the OPL was shutting down and Oceanic players would now be considered domestic in North America. That cleared the path for one of the biggest moves of the LCS offseason, when C9 sold the contracts of Licorice and two of Fudge's academy teammates and promoted Fudge to their starting roster. Fudge started his LCS career in the new lock-in tournament, with most fans not really knowing what to expect from him. Unfortunately, in his first LCS showings, he frankly got kinda smashed in lane. Whether it was Impact and Svenskeren proxying his waves, or Alfari solo killing him, Fudge definitely took some hits. His minus 630 GXD10 was the worst he's posted in a single split or tournament in his career. But by the time the spring playoffs arrived, Fudge had found his footing, and he turned his numbers around with plus 228 GXD10 to go with a 4.0 KDA and 66.1% kill participation, helping Cloud9 take home an LCS title. That was the fourth split in a row that Fudge's team conquered. Fudge's improvement was notable enough that we dedicated a run-it episode to his ability to overcome Alfari as his own personal final boss. Fudge's next step was to return to the international stage at MSI, but this time his opponents included players like Dom Juan Kia's Khan and Royal Never Give Up's Zhao Hu, players among the world's best at their position. Unsurprisingly, Fudge's numbers took a step backwards. Cloud9 headed home for the summer split and struggled to recapture their spring form as a team. Fudge's laning stats didn't advance, but he continued his personal momentum as an overall player, and earned a spot on the LCS's first All-Pro team. C9 finished third in the LCS playoffs, and that meant a trip back to the world's play-in stage. Two years after dropping out of play-ins, Fudge proved how much he'd grown as a player by dramatically boosting his numbers across the board. He more than tripled his KDA, and boosted his leaning outcomes by over 900 GXD, en route to a berth in the group stage. The group stage brought Fudge back into competition with Damwon and Khan, as well as more world-class opponents in Nuguri and Odoamne. This was an even greater challenge than MSI, and Fudge found himself in a familiar position, facing a setback and posting a minus 493 GXD10 in the main stage of Worlds. But the signs of growth and improvement were there. Fudge's all-around contributions helped C9 reach the quarterfinals, the first time an LCS team had done so in three years, and his solo kill on Genji's Rascal showed the potential that Fudge is still working to achieve. At every step of his career, Fudge has found himself thrown up against bigger and bigger challenges. He gets knocked down, but he gets back up again stronger than before. Fudge is still only 19 years old and already one of the best top laners in the LCS. His next step is to improve his numbers on the world's main stage, and if you follow the trajectory of his career so far, that's not a goal, it's an expectation. Bigger, better, cooler. Uh, that is 
how I would describe North America's performance now that Cloud9 has officially made it out, and who knows who else will be after I film this outro. But it's also the exact way that you can describe the new Alienware Aurora that has released uh, in celebration of Alienware's 25th anniversary. This thing looks amazing. It's an evolution of, evolution of their legendary design that you may have uh, seen before you've checked out their stuff. It's fantastic. Uh, it's just so so neat to see uh, what they are doing over there with this new this new setup. It's just so beautiful. Uh, so anyway, I just I'd love it if you guys could go check out the new Alienware Aurora. You can do so at alienware.com/travis. There's a link in the description below, and use my code. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fantastic.